So we're here today for Spark the Brain. I'm your host, Kofi. My guy right here. Co-host, Brandon. I'm in the building. And we got a special guest today. We got Kevin Graham. Kokomo NYC in Williamsburg. Happy to be so, here. Yes, this is this is um this is really big for us. Yeah. You know, when 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 Jiggy actually told me about, you know, you and everything, he sent me a page, I was like super inspired. Not just because it's a restaurant, but to see two black people come together and build something, build an empire here. And I just want to say thank you for like allowing us to be in your space today. Honestly. Oh no, man. Thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to spread more light on our story and our journey, man. Definitely uh Happy just to, to be noticed and acknowledged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the journey. Like, um, so right now we're in Brooklyn. Were you born in Brooklyn? Were you born somewhere else? You like, I want to open up in Brooklyn. Was so I, I was born in Jamaica. Uh -huh. right, I was born in Jamaica. Can't even get to rep that because people will kill me when they see the video. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. Saying? So I was born in Jamaica. I came here and uh, I moved up to here in New York. I moved to the Bronx. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm from the Bronx. Shout out to the X. Mm -hmm. You know, all day, all day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, but, I, but I do I do love Brooklyn, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up in the Bronx. I was into a lot of uh, nightlife mm -hmm. and uh, fashion um, growing up in the Bronx. So I was in the city a lot, and mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, events um, around the city. I was always popping in and out of different uh, spaces that were doing culinary events or just doing, you know, the urban themed parties and stuff like that. So I frequent myself around the city just to mm -hmm. catch a vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm about a vibe and experience. So, you know, I think New York City has one of the best vibes or experience or something I like to call atmosphere vibe. Mm. You know I mean the atmosphere and the vibe is always yeah. right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If y'all steal that, I'm a, I'm coming for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got that. You got that one. Yeah, yeah, atmosphere vibe. The atmosphere vibe. I like that one. The I like that vibe one. vibe is real. So um definitely just uh ended up in Brooklyn for uh, ended up in Brooklyn because I was a guest chef at a restaurant for Black History Month. Mm. And that's actually how I met my wife. But I, I feel like I'm going too fast. So So originally yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah, you're a chef. So, so I, like, I came up to... with a group of chefs. Okay. Uh, my, my, origin, my origin story is I started off in nightlife with promotions. Okay. All right? Um, and my background is marketing, nightlife, culinary, and promotions, mm -hmm. and branding. Oh, right? so But I went to school for fashion, merchandising, and branding. Okay. All right? Um, but I also promoted nightlife for about 20 years in New York City. Okay. Um, with f f some friends I grew up with, mm -hmm. and um, they became chefs. Mm -hmm. And one of those chefs was uh, Omar from Omar's Kitchen. Okay. So I kind of learned from Omar and the rest of the, not kind of, I did learn from Omar and the rest mm -hmm. of the guys. Yeah. Everything I know today in the kitchen, I learned. And actually, obviously, I built on that as yeah. I, I went on. I built on that and took some of my own skill sets and applied it to what we're doing here today. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been an amazing, It, it seems journey. like you do a lot of things. What is, like, what keeps you going? Because I feel like once you came in, you was already... Oh, yeah, I, and, I, it, and it's beautiful I, to see. I you know? knew that was gonna happen too. It's, uh, it's. I'm used to it. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the nature of the beast. I understand the 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 culture and the um the industry that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know that it's always go. Mm -hmm. It's always go. It's always um. It's never really a a calm time in this industry. Yeah. But what keeps me going is my my three kids and my wife, who's mm -hmm. also co-owner here, mm -hmm. and you know shout out to Rhea because she is the brainchild behind a lot of things that we do here. So mm -hmm. definitely shout out to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do y'all like um, make time for family, friends, the kids, and just, you know, just your life in general, just making moves, doing what y'all want to do at, at the same time as owning something? Man, you got to um, you gotta find balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At first it was, it was very hard because things are just coming at you 90 miles an hour. Like you're, we're on a train ride that we don't really control the speed. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like things just keep going and going and going, but there has to be a time where you step back. You know what I'm saying? Communication and um, and uh, teamwork mm -hmm. is a lot. And having that is very important. And having that support from family and friends, you know what I'm saying? Because you need to be able to ask for help. You need yeah. to be able to lean in. You need others to be able to pour into what you're doing so that you can be uh, successful and you can have some stability and balance. It's also great for your mental health as well. So just, you know, communicating with my wife and, you know, talking to my kids, too, even though they're, they're, uh, they're about to be two, uh, four, and my daughter's five. But even just communicating with them, asking them what's going on with them in their lives at this young age is important yeah. Yeah, yeah. to build that relationship. So um, we, t we, we find time by taking the time mm -hmm. to, to plan. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, by paying attention to the other things that are important in life, it can't just be about the business, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. so just striking that balance, you know what I'm saying, communication, like I said, is, is one of the key things mm-hmm. in, in any relationship, you know what I'm saying. What was the, was the mar- you got married first, right, before the restaurant yes. and everything, um, what was that conversation like, like coming up with the idea, like, yo, we going, we about to pop this off, we gonna do this Caribbean mm-hmm. restaurant, <laughs> so we about hell. to go crazy, like, nah, I, I, I'm not bring, bring me to that I'm, moment. I'm not gonna lie to you, um, <laughs> my wife, the, the restaurant that I ended up being the guest chef at with, um, with my, my boys, um, we were, that restaurant was uh, seeking a, a, a collaboration with us for a while. We had okay. turned it down like two years in a row. Okay. Right? My wife was the marketing manager at the restaurant, mm-hmm. and she was able to reach out to us and, you know, tell us something appealing, something mm-hmm. enticing. Um, and we like, we said, you know what, let's, we'll do it. But, you know, I, I don't believe in, uh, you know, random circumstances or, mm-hmm. you know, I believe in faith and in God, mm-hmm. and uh, everything happens for a reason. So um, we were meant to be at that restaurant that day because obviously that's mm-hmm. how I met my wife. Um, when I saw when I saw my wife there that day, uh, I already knew I was gonna marry her. Mm-hmm. I told I actually told someone that works at the restaurant I'm gonna marry this girl, wow, right? Wow, and and wow. it's it's crazy because um, the girl started telling people that, mm-hmm. and when we opened this restaurant, people started coming here from like Atlanta, mm-hmm. and coming from Florida, and they're like, "Yo, I heard a story. I yeah. just want to know if it's true." Yeah. And it, it, I actually I actually forgot about it until people started reminding mm-hmm. me. And this girl came to me. She said, "You know, I want to meet the man that knew his purpose in life and knew his destiny and what he was gonna do with the woman that he saw for the first time." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Tell me about this." Yeah. And then she reminded me of the story. I was like, "I did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah." And, yeah, and yeah. I did speak that into into, into existence. Mm-hmm. But when we um back to which the question you initially asked, you know, just wanted to give some background on it a little bit. When we got married, we had no plans of opening a restaurant. We had plans of being entrepreneurs because we're both strong-minded okay. individuals, and we didn't want to. We knew from onset we don't want. We didn't want to work for anyone. Yeah. We wanted to establish some something for ourselves and have generational wealth. Yeah. You know, something that we could pass down to our children and something that we could be proud of mm-hmm. and claim for ourselves. So you know, it was never a plan as to what business it was going to be. We just knew we were going to do something. something. We were both into marketing and events. We initially, originally, were, we were trying to open an event space. Okay. And then COVID hit. Mm. And we found this space that um, Realtor came to us and said, well, this is an event space that I found for you in Williamsburg. And as soon as I, I saw it, my wife showed it to me. I didn't make the initial uh, the, the walk walkthrough. Mm. Uh, I said, this is uh, definitely a, a restaurant. Yeah. And it would be a, a we'd be doing a disjustice to have just do events here. Yeah. Like this is a restaurant. It was, I, was it, this, it was this space. It was this okay. space. Okay. And I, I said to my wife, I, I've I've worked in the restaurant industry for a while, doing nightlife, doing pop up events at different restaurants, have friends in the restaurant industry. Yeah. It this is a it's a lot of work. Mm. It's a lot of work. And we sat there and she said, Do you think we could be successful on it? based on the following you have and the direction that we're going right now. And I said, yeah, I, I, of course. Yeah. Uh, of course, I, I, I believe in us. I believe in what we be bringing to uh, the culinary, uh, bringing, to this, bringing this to this culinary industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a very ambitious conversation. Mm-hmm. And we both stepped, we both walked into it feeling as if we were just going to be successful. Mm. And I, and I want to say to people, like, you should carry that type of attitude. Walk into the things that you want to do and walk into it like, I know I can do this and I know I'm going to win at this. Yeah. You know, right. start giving yourself flowers before other people have to tell you that you're great at something yeah. or that you can accomplish something. Because we see, we keep sitting here waiting for recognition from other people. You're never going to get it. Mm. You got to worry about where you are in life and what God has given you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's um just really walk into that. I, I would like to say it's probably the Kanye West attitude. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you got to yeah. walk in there knowing that you can do whatever the hell you want. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, if I take anything from Kanye, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Walk yeah, in yeah. there knowing you can do anything you want and nobody can't tell you shit. Mm. 
Because mm-hmm. when we opened this restaurant, people was telling people were telling us not to do it. Your first time restaurant tours, COVID's about to happen. You guys never opened a restaurant before. Yeah. You got to worry about the Mexican spot down the block. You got to worry about this spot up here. Mm-hmm. You're not on the walking path. Mm-hmm. You off down on Kent. Nobody goes down there. And look at us now. Yeah, yeah. Like, How did you block out that noise? Did you already see like, nah, I got the vision. I'm, I'm walking in it like you just man, said. Or listen, like, man, I walk by faith. Mm. You know, I, I, I gotta keep mentioning that and. I hope this doesn't turn into a Bible study or anything like that. But, hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey. I, I walk by faith, man. Listen, when God shows me a direction and opens a door for me, I walk through that door with confidence knowing that God's going to lead me to wherever I need to be. And even if I walk into that room and there's fire all around me, I know that I'm protected and I'm good. So all that other stuff is just noise. You know what I'm saying? Because people are always going to tell you what they think you can't do not even accomplishing or walking down that road themselves mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you always gotta have that mentality yeah. you know what i'm saying and that confidence within yourself mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's what we did man we just kind of walked into it and we did things that were out of character mm-hmm. in this industry and people were just like were just like very surprised and it was just very odd to people that the decisions that we decided to do, things that we decided to do, letting people into our lives on social media, showing the build out step by step, you know, showing our struggles, showing our, gotcha. our low days and our high days, gotcha. you know, and just being really personal and connecting with people was one of the smartest things we could have done to get people to want to come to this restaurant because they felt a part of what we were doing. Okay, so you let people in to yeah. feel comfortable to say, no, no, I got to try it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times people see success and they people want to know, how did you make it? Mm-hmm. They don't want to see the Ferrari. They don't want to see the $5 million house. Yeah. How did you get that? Was there a struggle behind it? Because you see, basically right now, with the way social media works and the way our generation is, and you know, it's just like people see the stars Mm-hmm. And they see the, the glam, but they don't know the struggle or what it took a person to get to that. Mm-hmm. And showing all of that meant people were like, okay, I can ascertain that same type of success mm-hmm. because they did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They did it in COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My yeah. wife was pregnant when we did it. Wow. We had two kids, one on the way. Wow. Actually, one kid, one on the way. And we're in COVID where all restaurants open, mm-hmm. I mean, are closed. We're in a neighborhood that's not predominantly black. Mm-hmm that we're not predominantly successful in. We're first time restaurant tours. You know, my wife's 25, I'm 35. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She's the youngest African-American woman to own a restaurant in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. She's probably the only mm-hmm. African-American woman to own a restaurant in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, with all these things that were placed in front of us, like, you know, to say, you can't do it, we yeah. just ignored it. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, we just ignored it. We walk our own path and we, we walk in faith. Mm-hmm. And I know y'all confidence is high, is high, but um, when did y'all know, like, I know some people, it was like, I knew we made it when this person came to our venue. I knew we made it oh, when man. it was sold <laughs> out. Like, when did oh, yeah, y'all know? What was know, that moment? Like, we did this. Um, <laughs> you know, we have plenty of moments like that, but it, it's crazy because there are... Like, normally I would tell you a story about a celebrity, mm-hmm. but it was just the overwhelming love and the people that we inspired. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. overwhelming amount of DMs and people that came us to tell us a story of how we inspired them. Mm-hmm. I had mothers and fathers come into me saying, my daughter and my son look up to you. Mm-hmm. I brought my children here to meet you. Yeah. And I'm looking at young mm-hmm. black and brown kids and I'm like... I'm in tears yeah. to know that, you know, this is this is what we're doing has that af- much effect on people, not just in New York City. I'm talking about people are coming from Boston and people are coming from different states wow. to come down here. I had a family come from Germany wow. and they came down wow. here and said, we saw you guys on social media and we knew that they came to see... Uh, can I say Mary J. Blige concert? Wow. And they say they from Germany or yeah. Europe or something like that. And I was like, wow. And they said they, they love like our they, culture over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Then, you know, <laughs> so she came to they came to see Mary J. This was this this was last year. And they said they planned this into their trip. Mm. And I'm like, then they said they, they just wanted to meet us. Yeah. But you know, I get so many different backgrounds, 
people from different walks of life, so many different races, yeah. white, black, mm-hmm. you know, Caribbean people, yeah. and they're just all so proud of what we're doing. I'm just mm-hmm. like, this is this is amazing. Mm-hmm. 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 And I was gonna say too, what is like? Um, I know you gave a lot of advice <clears throat> so far to us, but what's like advice you got for somebody that wants to own something, like the the mindset and the the process. Because people just want to be good. Let me tell you something else, too. I forgot, and this is important. Mm -hmm. I tell you when I knew that we were really um, doing something important for the culture. People, for for this year, I've gotten a lot of uh, people reach out to, to they want to honor us for Black History Month. Mm. And I'm like, we get honored for Black History Month? Mm -hmm. Normally, you see, you know, it's... Yeah, 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 yeah. Ali yeah. Tubman. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know Something that happened so, years you know ago. Yeah, Muhammad yeah. Ali, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, people want to honor the us fact that you made that stamp. History month. Wow, wow. Like, wow. I'm like, wow. this is, I'm like, this is a, it's a blessing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm humbled by it all. I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not bragging about it. I'm bragging about the effect that it has on other people. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm I'm excited and I'm proud of that. You know what I'm saying to me to to continue to inspire our culture and our people to do better mm-hmm. and to change the narrative on on how we're viewed yeah, as yeah. African American mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. women, families, yeah. the family uh, foundation that is is uh, that is portrayed by uh, the narrative that's portrayed. You know, like we don't have a family foundation. Yeah. It's either a a, 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 one, a one woman household or, yeah. or if the father's not there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm. Very happy to change that narrative. Yes, big time. I, I grew up my, both with both of my parents. Mm. You know what I'm saying, and I think that it's so important to have both of my parents in my life because mm. they come from a, a background of you know hard times. Mm. And the reason I work so hard, and that's another thing that keeps me going, is that every day I'm trying to prove to them that the time that they and the sacrifices they made were worth it. Mm. You know what I'm saying, and I will never. Never, never forget that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Never forget where you're coming from. Amen. You know what I mean? Break, break down, like, some steps to get into the restaurant business, right? Like, give us a couple of steps to get into I'll it. give you the steps and I'll tie it in with your question. Can you mm-hmm. repeat your question again? Um, To start a business, that's what you Yeah, to start a business. Like, down. what's the... What's the advice do you have for people that, like, I want to own something, but they don't understand <clears throat> what it's like being black to own something? And being, especially in America, owning something. Yeah. Well, a strong team, a strong team. What, whatever, um, whatever venture or um, idea that you have or path you decide to walk, it's your career mm-hmm. or dream that you have. A strong group of people around you. You know what I'm saying? That want to contribute positively to what you're doing to answer that question mm. about, you know, opening a business. Yeah. And I would tell people, when you have that idea, don't share it with everyone. Mm-hmm. There's so many envious people out here that will, um, you know, that are jealous or don't want to see you succeed. Mm. Keep that keep that thought or that dream in your, in your head. You know, write it down on a wall for inspiration. Put it on your inspiration yeah. board. Yeah. Do all that mm-hmm. good stuff, but don't tell it to everybody. Mm-hmm. Tell it to, you know, one or two people that you trust mm-hmm. that can help you to build on that. And, you know, and, and, and work on it from there. But definitely have a strong team around you. Because if you look at all the successful people, they always, all of them said they had a strong team around them. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? People that they can trust, people that can help them, keep them motivated, you know what I'm saying? Get them, help them to get to where they want to get to. Um, we, we had to have a strong team around us here at Kokomo. It's, it's so many different things that had to be done when we opened this restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, like, we did construction here ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We did, we hired a construction company, but we yeah. were part of the construction team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're okay. picking up. He was up. like hands, hands yeah. on. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Man, we're picking up sheetrock, five o'clock in the morning, restaurant deeper runs every day. Yeah. I had to, me, it was me and my wife's father at 5 a.m. Wow. In the morning, he woke me up and we were going out to get sheetrock, going out to this plum, uh, plumber, mm-hmm. uh, Pumper yard and you know all this stuff you know and just kind of it's a lot of work. <laughs> I know I told I know I told um uh, Micaela correctly in Spanish to bring me three glasses of wine. 
I don't think uh, she understood your Spanish. Look, look, she, look, she's smiling. She's, she's <laughs> feeling really Sorry, bad. Right, that's that's the end. She told me it four times and I couldn't understand her. <laughs> yeah. I'm Thank sorry. you so much. Cheers, Appreciate guys. you. Us as black people, we have a narrative of, it's a rule book that we are supposed to follow as black people. Mm -hmm. And some of us follow a book that I don't know where we get these ideologies and these philosophies from of how a black man should be a black man. Mm -hmm. There's another group over here saying you should do this. Yeah. And I feel like that's what separates us, and that's why we're never on the same page. Gotcha. What people we should work with, who we should spend our money with, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And I feel like some of us wear our, I want to say our heritage, but our culture on our sleeves. Mm -hmm. Like, we wear it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Like, we feel like we're owed something. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't walk into any place feeling like I'm owed anything. I feel like I walk in here... And I'm just as deserving as any other person, whether mm -hmm. black, white, Hispanic, or anything, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever uh, your background is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I walk into that room knowing that I deserve this, this as much as anyone else. But I don't walk around this room and feel as if my people were went through this, so yeah. I need this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't walk into a room and say, um, I was not hired because I was black. Mm -hmm. I wasn't hired because God didn't want to give me that job. Mm -hmm. I wasn't meant to be there. Mm -hmm. That's why I wasn't hired. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. if, I, if, if I wasn't hired because I was black, I wasn't meant to be there. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I wasn't meant to be there. Yeah. <laughs> why would I want to work with people that, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't meant to be there. So I, I try to keep a, a positive um, mindset, understanding and respecting everything that our people have gone through. Mm -hmm. But I personally didn't go through that. Mm -hmm. But I, and I respect it and I and I embrace it, mm -hmm. and that's what motivates me to work as hard as I do, understanding where our people have come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But to wear it, I wear it positively. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't wear it in a negative light. I embrace it, and I and I encourage it. I tell my I tell my children where we're coming from, why we work so hard, why certain things are the way they are in life. Mm -hmm. But no way in any form do you ever feel like you don't deserve anything. And like because of your skin color, yeah. you know what I'm saying. That's not what we do in my household. Mm -hmm. Respectfully, that whatever everybody yeah. else does, yeah. what, what everybody else does, or what they believe, you know, this is just how I'm raising my children. This is how I see it. As a black man, I stand strong. Mm -hmm. I stand knowing that if I put the work in, I'm gonna get exactly what I want in life. Yeah, ain't nobody stopping me from getting anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Whatever I want to achieve, whatever me and my family want to do. No one is stopping us because we're black. Mm. That's not a door that exists in front of me that I see. That I don't see any of that. Mm. All I see is my goal, and I see God, mm. and that's it. Mm. Mm. Powerful, powerful. Um, that, that was good. You, you know, you had some. Yeah. So, um, because I noticed when we came in, the hospitality was was crazy. It was dope, and I wanted to know, like. With you, like hiring people or like say if I went to work here, like I'm like, I want to work here. Can I get an interview? What do you look for in a person with, you know, coming to your place because they represent you? Oh, man, I look for. And so we, we personally, I, it's funny, we haven't done it as much lately, but uh, we personally used to interview every single person. Me and my wife interviewed every single person that oh, came in and told of our okay. story. And I still do a lot of interviewing now. Some people get past me, though, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot going on. <coughs> Um, we look for, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I hate when I draw a blank. We look for a person that is passionate about what they're doing and it's in their heart. Someone that has this, the hospitality and knows how to, uh, treat people is it's a part of them because I can train someone to come in how to use the POS system how to carry a plate but I can't ch train you to naturally be a person that's you know hospitable caring that understands people's needs and wants and how to speak to people and how to be polite I can't necessarily train that and it won't be authentic because now you're just doing it because I told you to do it and I'm like, telling you that this is how it's supposed to be yeah. we want people that actually really uh, love what they do. Yeah. Like, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. That's why I do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm good at it. I said, let me say good. That's why I'm great at it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I actually love doing it. I love to please people. I love to have a certain ambiance and experience. I love to see a smile on a person's yeah. face when they're eating a meal yeah. and show that they're enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? I love for a person to want to leave here and tell their friends about it because the experience, the smell, the, the lights, the food, the sound, everything was an experience for them. Yeah. And I like to curate those experiences. So I look for people that are really passionate and really love what they do. And once I have that, I can train you anything else. You know what I'm saying? I can teach you whatever else I want to teach you. But I can't do the reverse. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, walk us down like some steps into like actually starting a restaurant, right? Because some of our viewers, there's going to be some people watching you right now and say, you know what? I want to do what he's doing. Man. What are some of like the steps you would Yo. tell them getting started? <laughs> Yo, this question is a, is a funny one. I don't want to contradict myself right now. <laughs> if I had a blueprint yeah. or a map, mm. right, to show you exactly what I did, I probably wouldn't understand it myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I really feel like God carried us the whole way in the decisions that we made. Mm -hmm. um, opening a restaurant, man, it's a, it's a beast. Yeah. It's a beast of an industry. It's long hours. It's sacrifices. It's time away from your kids. It's time away from your wife. You know what I'm saying? It's time away from your mother, your parents. You know what I'm saying? You you're going to lose relationships. You're going to lose friendships. You're going to become distant. But if you're doing this, if you're in this industry, please let it be worth it. Please let it be that you're doing this for something greater. You know what I'm saying? Are you trying to change the color? culture are you trying to get a michelin star are you trying to be the first african-american chef asian chef uh spanish chef that did a b c or x you know don't just come in this industry because it's not about money yeah we make money but anyone that comes into this industry is because they're trying to um they're trying to achieve a goal you know what I'm saying? If you if you're uh, as an owner, servers come and go. That's yeah. just a gig. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's it's a lot of you to come into this into the restaurant industry, it's kind of crazy. Mm. It's a crazy industry. Like you gotta be crazy and you have to have a certain level of mental balance yeah. Yeah. to go through the things that we go through daily. Mm. You know, I, I think it's uh you need a support system. You know what I'm saying? You need a strong foundation and a strong support. And that goes for any industry. But if you're coming into this one, please have a family <laughs> that is ready to support you. Please have uh, really close friends that you can trust. Don't, don't let everyone into your business and everyone buy into it and everyone invest into it because it, that, that your dream will just turn into somebody else's dream. Okay. And you won't have a voice or an opinion on what you want to do with your own business. I was going to ask you that yeah, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely, um, it's uh, just be prepared and do your research. You know what I'm saying? Definitely be prepared and, and know what you're getting yourself into. Because once you're into it, I mean, if I wanted to turn back now, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we're too far in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. now we're just going forward. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, else can yeah, we yeah. do? Mm -hmm. We opening mm -hmm. up hotels. Like, what are we doing? Next we putting move? these restaurants in uh, Dubai. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. what's next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just remembered something too, man. The most important thing, and I, this is probably going to, if I had to leave a message for anyone that's trying to get into this industry, is that you're not selling food. Mm. You're selling an experience. Wow. And that's the difference between what I think me and my wife do and a lot of other people that have tapped into that, un that understanding is that we know we're selling experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Food is just, it has to be good. Mm -hmm. But what keeps people coming mm -hmm. back is really that experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm do, saying? Do you remember the day like when y'all like, was like, you know, like, let's open up a restaurant, like what y'all was doing? Like, was it just like y'all was watch TV? Like, <laughs> let's do that. Like, when did y'all like know? Well, I think when we had Autumn, mm -hmm. my wife was like, um, we had a long talk and we were like, you know, we want so much and we want a certain level of life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we want a certain lifestyle for our children. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what motivated this push to be entrepreneurs and to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have three kids. Yeah. I have one girl, you know, and two boys, my, and my daughter, all of them. I feel like that's my world. Mm -hmm. She's my firstborn. Mm -hmm. And um, everything I do, everything we do, is just to make sure that they are good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that when we leave this earth, they have an example of how you should raise a family mm -hmm. and they have something to lean back on. Yeah. You know, so that it's a I'm I'm sitting here reminiscing, man. It's a it's a beautiful place that we in. Yeah. And you know, taking the time with the thing I like about these interviews is that a lot of times we don't get to reminisce or mm -hmm. take take that time to look back and just, you know, appreciate yeah. these conversations mm -hmm. make you appreciate what you have going on in your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just to be thankful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I'm glad that we're sitting here having this conversation. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Oh, shout out to the chef on behalf of him with the flatbread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. legendary, legendary. Yeah. If, if anyone ever wants to have amazing flatbread, please Yo, come listen, here. I'm gonna tell you. I this. had a whole experience. Everybody stood around me. Like everybody was like watching me, and I'm just like, "Yo, nah, this is crazy. This is, I'm dancing and stuff." Like it, that was amazing. Dancing. So thanks. I'm gonna tell you this. I, I created every flatbread there uh, with the help of uh, one of my head chefs that was here when we first opened. Yeah. Um, Haitian chef. Uh, his mm -hmm. name is Mitch. Shout out to Mitch. Um, and shout out to Christian too as well. Um, we uh, we created I created we created those flatbreads and I didn't create the truffle one. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that. Okay, okay, <laughs> but, okay, so good. But all the other ones I created. Yeah, the oxtail flatbread, the wagwan flatbread, the aki, yeah. the rasta pasta flatbread. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we got the best flatbreads in Brooklyn. Mm, mm. I, I'm gonna stand by that. Okay, right. okay, I don't okay. Care where you getting your slices from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's it. <laughs> That's a that's a light jab. Light jab. That's a light jab. I, I you, love, if I you love, know, you know. If you know, you know. And I, I love what y'all doing over there. So it's not, it's, don't take it the wrong way. I, I love what y'all doing. I'm a I'm a fan. Oh man. Um, but it's uh, I think we got the best flatbreads. Number one. All right. Yeah. So I say that because they got slices over there and pizza, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And they cut different, so they should know what I'm talking about now too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on on this part of the the show, we have it's called conversation with your younger self, right? And you know, if you could give three pieces pieces of advice to your younger self, because so many people that are watching this right now are younger, you know, a younger demographic, what would you tell your younger self? Three pieces of advice. Oh, now that man. you're at this, you're further in time, right? You're 35 years young. Yeah, if I could talk to my younger self. Yeah. Um. Listen to what my parents were telling me. They were right. Yeah. Um. That's one. Two, I would uh, definitely save more, right? And three, I would definitely cherish the moments and spend more time with family. Yeah, that's, um. I've had a lot of people pass away the last couple of years. And um, I think we take advantage of the time we have with people and Recognizing that we don't appreciate them till they're no longer here. Um, work on your friendships, you know, spend time with your family and know that the friends that you have when you're 16 and 20 are not the same friends you're going to have when you're 30 and 40, even though it feels that way. Mm. You know, the people that walk in and out of your life are part of the journey. Some of them are here to help you. And some of them are here not to help you. You have to recognize who those people are and keep those people in, in that place. And I feel like I, throughout my life, and I wouldn't change it, I feel like throughout my life I've been very nice and, and open to letting people into my life. And I would be a lot more uh, protective of who and who comes into my circle and the energy that I let into my circle because uh, you can't let everybody in. <laughs> you can't you can't let everybody in. You know, you got to you got to protect that. You got to protect your your surrounding and your family and um, knowing who is for you mm -hmm. and who's not for you mm -hmm. is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it, it, my younger self 
we just, you know, we just open to everybody. You know, take everybody's advice. Do this, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, man, I got a lot now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Knowing who you are mm -hmm. is one thing. And um, also, knowing who you are and never letting anyone introduce you to yourself. Mm. Right? That's a, that's that's something uh that's something I live by. Don't let people introduce you to yourself. And if, if if anyone doesn't understand that, it's other people telling you who you are, what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, how you're supposed to do it, and what you can accomplish in life. People seeing you and telling you how great you're gonna be, or you know what I'm saying how successful you'll be. Never. Mm. Never. Mm -hmm. Kev. Thank you, thank you. This is another episode of Spark the Brain Podcast. My co-host. Yeah, we want to shout out Kokomo in general. Kev giving us his time. Thank you, bro. Yes, I appreciate yes, you, yes, man. Yes, yes. As appreciate well as you, man. Grand too. family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. That was great, man. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that, great, was, that was great. That was great. Right, what's up, y'all? You here with Kev, man. We at Kokomo NYC, the hottest Caribbean restaurant in New York City. And we're here for another episode of Spark the Brain Podcast.